Thanks, Debbie. So this morning we have the privilege of having Michael Soon Lee, who has been a broker and an agent for over 30 years in our community. He developed a, a system that clearly demonstrates his value and services to his clients. He's, uh, as far as negotiating um, commissions, so he's gonna come share that with us and he has not had to lower his commissions in over 10 years, uh, or 10 decades, I'm sorry, or wait. <laughs> Uh, he spoke at over 10 conventions, National Association of Realtor Conventions, and also at state level. So we are um, happy to have him here. Please welcome author and broker, Michael Lee. I'm not quite that old, but I'm feeling it pretty much. Well, we talked about the fact earlier that a lot of us have to work for free, or at least people think we should work for free. We're about the only profession where we've got to justify our compensation to our clients. Is that not right? Do attorneys have to justify their fees? Do doctors have to justify their fees? So why do we have to justify our fees to our clients? One of the challenges is we provide service. We don't sell cars or refrigerators, so it's really hard to you know, get in the car for us and drive it because you have to know how good we are by basically experiencing us. So we are intangible. So one of the challenges with being in our profession is we are intangible. You can't touch us, feel us, smell us until you try us out. And then you can know how good we really are. So how can we make ourselves as realtors more tangible? What do you do to make yourself tangible to your clients? What do you do? Okay, we educate them. Do you also give them testimonial letters? Pop them in the car. Pop them in the car, yeah, you could do that, but then again, they don't know how good you are yet. Uh, one of the things that I do is I give them testimonial video. After every closing transaction, I always sit down with my clients have them talking to my cell phone about how they enjoy the transaction and what they felt. And I put that into my computer, and so at the end of my listing presentation, or a presentation with a buyer, I always show them three or four clips of clients that have been happy with their transactions with me. I hope you will consider doing the same thing. How many of you use testimonial letters? Come on, everybody does, right? How many of you use testimonial video? Nobody. Which is better, a letter or a video? The video is so much better because they can see clients that you've worked with, how happy they are, and it really does help. So I suggest you consider doing that. But why do people question our value? As realtors, people in America believe we do what? to earn our money. For buyers, we drive them around, show a few properties, go to escrow and collect a big check, right? For sellers, what do they believe we do? Put a sign in the yard, it magically sells, we go to escrow and collect a big check. That is the biggest challenge we have as realtor. Realtors are the myths that surround us. Number one myth, is that we do what to earn our money? Virtually nothing. About 30 years ago when I got into the business, I went on a couple of listing presentations when I first got started, and I know this has never happened to you. I got done with a fabulous listing presentation, and the seller said, you know, this is good, but you guys don't do that much to earn your money, so why don't you lower your commission?" And at that time, I didn't have a very good answer for that. And when I left, I started thinking, well, there's two possibilities here. Either I'm unethical, and I'm running around collecting money for which I didn't earn, or number two, I actually do earn the money, but I don't know how to articulate it to my clients. I don't think I'm unethical, so let me follow a transaction from start to finish 
And I'm going to write down everything I do for my sellers for at least a month. And let me see what happens. So every single time I did something for the seller, pulled the preliminary title report, I put the sign on the lockbox, made copies of keys, I did all of that stuff. I went to the planning commission to check permits, all of that stuff. Every time I did it, I wrote it down on a slip of paper, I threw it into my glove box. On Saturday, I typed it into my computer. And at the end of the month, I came up with a little list. And it was a list of 13 things that I did for my seller. And that was pretty impressive to my seller. So I wrote it down into this little list. And basically it says, here's what I do to market your house. 13 things. The seller was pretty impressed. But I walked out thinking, wait a minute, that's a month. And that's maybe a third of the transaction. Let me continue this on for another couple of months and see what I come up with. And so what I did was, I kept my list and here's what happened. Every Saturday, I wrote my list. And I kept it going. And I came up with this list that ended up to be over a hundred items long. Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Just like downtown. Just like that. Yeah, I'm trying to get the word. Thank you. Appreciate that. So what I did was, I put, printed out this list just like this, and the next time I went on to a listing presentation, and the seller said, why don't you lower your commission? I said, here's a list of what I do to earn my money. I don't know what other agents do, but this is what I do to get the most price for you in the shortest amount of time. And I went through my list and I said, if you want me to lower my commission, why don't you pick a couple of things on this list that you might be willing to do yourself. <laughs> Since every one of these takes me time, and if you'd be willing to do some of these yourself, we can talk about lowering my compensation. And since I made this list, I've never had a seller say to me, yeah, you know, number 12, 14, and 67, I want to do those things. <laughs> they look at this list, their eyes glaze over, and they say, no, 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 you're the realtor, you do those things. And so I've never had to lower my commission once I've made the things I do tangible to them. And then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. There's also home buyers that we do things for that they have no idea what we do. So I sat down and I made a separate list for home buyers. What would you guess? Is my list for buyers shorter or longer than my list for sellers? It is much longer because there's so much more to do for buyers. And then I said, wait a minute. I also work with people whose listings have expired. Why don't I make a list for them of things that we do to help their home sell faster and at a higher price? And then I said, well, wait a minute. There are people who want to sell their own homes called FISBOs. What can we as realtors do that they cannot do themselves? So what I would recommend you do, if you want to maintain your value with your clients and not have to lower your commission, is simply sit down on a rock somewhere this afternoon and think about what are the things that you do to earn your money with your clients, whether it be a buyer, a seller, a FISBO, or someone whose listing has expired. Because if you bring out that list, I guarantee you will not have to lower your commission. But the challenge is they have no idea what we do to earn our money. In fact, when we're not with our clients, what do you think they think we're doing? Yeah, we're on the golf course, we're sitting around watching TV, having coffee. All of the things that we do behind the scenes, again, I would put that into my list. I used to not bother my clients. Because I didn't, you know, it was like 
If I had a question about the contract somewhere in the middle of the night that I was writing this contract at 11 p.m., I'm thinking, well, oh, maybe I'll call them tomorrow. No, nowadays, I call them at 11. And I tell them, look, I had a question about the contract. Uh, pest control, section one, section two, what do you want to do on this? And they always say now, Michael, are you still working? It's 11 o'clock. I said, yeah, there's a lot of work to do to put this transaction together. So I do not hesitate to let them know any time I'm working. So please, number one, make yourself tangible to your clients. Number two problem that we've got. Number one myth is we do nothing to earn our money. The number two myth is how much we make. The average person in America believes Forget reality, the average person in America believes that we as realtors make about what percent on the sale of any home? About 6%. They have no idea that it's cut in half because usually there's a listing and a selling broker. And then we as agents generally pay our brokers either a percentage, a flat fee, some other compensation for all of those beautiful offices, the support, the technology we get, and all of that. Then they forget that we have expenses as well. Little things like MLS fees, lockboxes, all the other expenses we have like E&O insurance and all of the other things we spend. And then of course we have taxes that we have to pay. And we are in the highest tax bracket in America. You'll figure this out on April 15th if you don't already know, but somebody tell me on every net dollar we make out of our commission after paying our broker and paying our expenses, on our net dollars into our pockets, what is our tax rate on that state, federal, and everything else as far as governmental taxes? Income taxes, what do you think, 40%? 48%? Fifty-five percent? Depends on your account. Okay, depends on your account. <laughs> Brad, that was good. Yeah, Brad's got a good account. You might want to talk to him about a referral. But yeah, we are way over fifty percent. Because if you're thirty-nine percent federal, ten percent state, there's already forty-nine percent. Then you've got thirteen percent self-employment tax on top of that. So you're really right around sixty percent on every dollar you make. So you've got to explain to your clients that instead of making 6%, you're really making about one half of 1% 1 of the sales price of any property net in your pocket after taxes. That's the money you've got to pay for your home, to put a roof over your family's heads, and to put food in their mouths. So please let them know that you don't make as much as they might think, and you work a whole lot harder than they think. So please don't try to be the cheapest realtor out there. Don't try to say, well, we go for this percent, everybody else is that percent. You will kill yourself, because what does it take to compete on price? What does it take to be the absolute cheapest agent out there? What does it take? Not much. All you've got to do is say, I'm the cheapest, and people will keep dropping your price and dropping your price. Good luck with that. I hope you will figure out what makes you unique. Pick some area of the market that you can grab on for yourself. If you want to specialize in condominiums, that's great because the CC&Rs are really confusing to a lot of people. If you want to specialize in investment property, you want to specialize in people that are first-time home buyers, or maybe people that are downsizing, specialize in something. Because if you don't, you're competing with everybody in this room. But if you specialize, you narrow your market down to a few people and then become the expert in that particular area. And that will really help them. So what do clients value? What would you guess, number one, your clients value as far as a realtor is concerned? What do sellers value? What do they want? Okay, they want the maximum price for their home in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of hassle, right? Because we can all overprice real estate and in a normal market, it's not going to sell. And that's going to mean a lot of hassle for them and they're going to be very, very unhappy. 
What a buyer's value. They want the home of their dreams for the least amount of money, least amount of hassle, and the shortest amount of time. And so if we can save them time, if we can reduce their liability, they will definitely go with you, and they will pay you what you're worth. So again, specialize and please, number one, choose your clients carefully. Do not let your clients choose you. If you get started out in this business, you pretty much have to work with everybody. But as you get going in your career, start thinking, who are the people I really like? What are they, you know, what are they like? What do they do for a living? So for example, there are clients I really like. I like clients in the helping professions, teachers, doctors, people like that. There are people, no disrespect intended, I don't get along well. I don't connect with, I don't click with. Those people happen to be engineers. <laughs> And again, no disrespect intended, there are many of you here who may be former engineers who get along great with them, but engineers drive me crazy. They want to know not just square footage on a home, they want to know square inchage. <laughs> and you know, I mean, to me, what does it matter if the home suits your needs, if it's a, a couple of feet off here or there, what does it really matter? But the engineering clients, it matters a lot to them. And again, that's just not my client. So start developing a picture of who your absolute best clients are and stick with them because it's a lot easier to market to them. So for example, if you're looking for, for example, for me teachers, people in the helping professions, it's easy to find lists mailing lists, email lists of teachers in this area. And you're able to target them very easily. If you want to target engineers in this area, there are mailing lists just for them. The more narrow you can make your target, the much easier it's going to be to target your market and it'll be less expensive because none of us has the time or the money to market to everybody. So choose your clients carefully. Work with your best clients. I have a saying, work with the best and turn away the rest. And have a marketing plan that brings you the absolute best clients. So as I wrap up, I just want to remind you about a couple of things. One thing I think we forgot to mention about Bay East, uh, one event that's coming up is Global Connect on uh, March 19th uh, from noon till 5. How many people went to the Global Passport event last year? Perhaps a lot of us went. This is an opportunity for you to find out how do you work with people from other countries and other cultures. There's a huge market these days. Over 8% of all properties sold in the United States are now being sold to foreign buyers. And that doesn't even include the people that are already here. African Americans, the Asians, the Hispanics, the Middle Eastern folks that are already here. So that event will help you to understand a little bit more about how to get them as clients, how to deal with them, how to build relationships. Brad, did you have something? Yeah, the early bird special of four dollars is ends today and then it goes to fifty-five. So Absolutely. Today. So if you jump on to the Bay East website, you can still register today at a discount. So thank you for reminding me of that. So as I wind up today, if you want to be more successful with your clients in keeping your commission where it needs to be, and I'm not here to tell you what that is, but if you want to get paid what you're worth, number one, justify your value with your clients by having a list of things you do to earn your money, and number two, show them how little you actually make. What I do is I actually give them a graph. Uh, it's a pie chart. It starts out with 100% pie, cuts it in half for the two sides of the transaction, cuts it again for the transaction, uh, how we divide it with the broker, cuts it down for expenses, cuts it down again for taxes, and pretty soon there's a little tiny slice there. They get it once they see that picture. 
So if you have any questions, you want to see my lists, again, you don't need my list, but if you're interested in mine, see me afterwards. I want to wish you a great tour and a great year. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much, Michael. Hey, you got here. I, I want to keep that. Yeah. Uh, now, now I can tell my clients all the things that I do. What? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Thank you. All right. All right.